Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. Our story is entitled, The New Shoe. This is the story of the typhoon chasers, the pilots and crews who man the Air Force flying weather stations in the Pacific. Proudly we hail Captains Mike Miller and Ralph Bennett, and all the officers and men of the 54th Strategic Reconnaissance Squadron of the United States Air Force Air Weather Service. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment. Daring and imagination, courage and science. These have propelled us straight into the jet age, the age of air speed faster than sound of flight into the farthest frontiers of the sky. Young man, how would you like to master one of those jet planes, sleek, powerful aircraft which represent the last word in military aviation? They're considered safer to fly than the old propeller planes. If you qualify for and successfully complete the interesting, exacting training of an aviation cadet, you'll have the chance. As a pilot in the United States Air Force, practicing a challenging career in the service of your country, you'll start as a second lieutenant earning more than $5,000 a year. If you're between 19 and 26 and a half, in good health, single, and meet mental and educational requirements, you're eligible to apply for the 16-month flight training course. See if you can qualify at your nearest Air Force base or local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, The New Shoe. <laughs> To most of us, the weather is just something to talk about. But to pilots and crews of the U.S. Air Force, weather can be a close friend or a deadly enemy. That's a teletype you hear. It's part of a worldwide communications network maintained by your Air Force, a network that relays details of temperatures, humidities, atmospheric pressures, wind directions, flight conditions, and all the innermost secrets of the thing we call weather. Where does all this information come from? Part of it comes from trained ground observers and meteorologists, but a good deal of it comes from the air itself, where that mysterious thing known as weather begins. Even over the lonely regions of the Western Pacific, Crisscrossed by military and civilian airplanes, weather information is gathered by the United States Air Force and its typhoon chasers in the air. We're on the island of Guam, home of the 54th Strategic Reconnaissance Squadron. It's mid-September, season of the big winds, the typhoons which sweep across the western Pacific. Today, a tropical sun shines warmly on Anderson Air Force Base as Captains Mike Miller and Ralph Bennett meet outside the bachelor officer's quarters. Hi, Ralph. Where are you headed? Mess hall. Even weather observers get hungry, believe it or not. Uh, so do pilots. Lead me to it. Have you seen the operation slate for tomorrow, Mike? Yeah, sure did. Looks like we're at bat again. That uh, makes us Vulture Margie 5. Uh, that's us, all right. Vulture Margie 5. Yeah. The fifth plane up to see dear old Margie in two days. We jump off at 0630 hours. How's Alice? Aleutian Alice, please. I'll thank you to call her by her right name. Well, she's being checked by the ground crew now. I took a look at the charts over at Weather. That Margie is really something. Ralph, my boy, a typhoon is a typhoon, no matter what her name. I know it, Mike. It's going to be rough out there tomorrow. Very rough. <laughs> Our scene changes from the ground to the air to a four-engine C-54 transport. 
Inside the transport is a group of men, men who proudly wear the wings of Air Force pilots, men who fought across the skies of Korea behind the gun sights of F-86 jet fighters, men headed now for a well-earned stateside leave. Wake up, dream boy, wake up. Huh? What's up? Trouble? Well, I wouldn't say trouble, but the news isn't good. Fasten your belt, because you and I are about to land at Anderson. Anderson? But that's on Guam. We're not due to land this side of Hickam Field. We weren't due to land, but we are. Looks like there's bad weather up ahead. Probably have to sit it out for a couple of days. Guam? A couple of days? Oh, no. And me with a date tomorrow night in San Francisco. Look at Mike, the pilot, put away that strawberry shortcake. Well, I plead guilty to a second helping. And what's the matter? Get a load of the long face on that fly boy headed over here. Yeah, I wonder what's eating him. Don't look now, but you're about to find out. Mind if I sit here, Captain? Oh, of course not. Sit down, Lieutenant. Phillips. Barnaby Phillips. Uh, I'm, I'm Ralph Bennett, and this is Mike Miller. How do you oh. do? Well, you one of the jet jockeys who just pulled in on that C-54? That's right. Well, don't sound so glum. You boys are on your way stateside. Uh, we're on our way, but not now. Here I had a date with a beautiful redhead in San Francisco, and now, just because of a little weather up ahead, we're grounded. Oh? Well, that's uh, real tough. Now I hear I have to twiddle my thumbs while the recon boys go out and take its temperature. Imagine playing nursemaid to the weather. Yeah, maybe that kind of a nursemaid doesn't have such an easy job, Lieutenant. Well, I'm not saying it is or it isn't. Doesn't sound very tough. Not like tackling a bunch of mates. Say, what can a visiting fireman do around here for a little excitement? Well, it all depends. There's some great fishing, a fine set of tennis courts, good movie at the theater. And... Well, that's better than Migs, but that's not what I would call real excitement. I suppose, though, if you're flying around all day looking at the weather, a movie might seem exciting at that. You know, Mike, that's very true. A fighting man doesn't want tennis. You're right, Ralph. A fighting man doesn't want fishing, either. No. Nope. What a fighting man wants... And what a fighting man should get... ...is a woman. Now, that's more like it. I think Margie is just the girl for him. Don't you, Mike? Perfect. Yeah. But the only way he can get to meet Margie is through, uh, Alice. Oh, okay, let's go see Alice. Ah, but there's the problem. Alice isn't available until tomorrow morning. Yeah, very busy girl, that Alice. Well, that kind of kills tonight. But it's the best you can do. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. Tomorrow morning at the earliest... I guess you'll have to waste the evening on a movie. Oh, that's all right, long as you're sure I can meet this Alice in the morning. Oh, we're sure of that, all right. Well, what time? Let's make it 0630 hours. 0630? Isn't that kind of early? Oh, not for Alice. Barnaby, you're in for quite a party. Mike and I and some of the boys will really show you a hot time. Brother, that Margie. Swell. I think I'll skip the movie, hit the sack early. See you in the AM. And thanks, fellas. Suppose he'll show? Our hot pilot? He'll show, don't worry. Maybe he caught on. Oh, I doubt it. Sometimes it takes a while for the Eager Beaver Brigade to realize that they're not the only ones who can fly Uncle Sam's aircraft. Why is it, do you suppose, that so many fighter pilots think they're the only ones who have a hot job? You got me, Michael. Hold it. Here he comes. Yeah, get a load of that sharp uniform. If you only knew Margie like we know Margie. <laughs> Rendezvous on schedule, gentlemen. Let's go meet up. All right, Lieutenant, but you'd, uh, you'd better try these on for size first. A flight gear? Well, what kind of a girl is this, Alice? What about Margie? Oh, flight gear's a requirement with Alice. Are you two kidding me? Not exactly, Lieutenant. Not exactly? What kind of an answer is that? Where is this, Alice? Why, uh, she's right over there, Barnaby. What, you mean that B-29? Yeah, yeah, that's Alice. Aleutian Alice. Ah, well, if that's Alice, then who, may I ask, is Margie? Margie? Why, um, she's a little typhoon, we know. She's the fastest gal in the whole Pacific at the moment. B-29, Typhoon, 0630 hour. <laughs> <laughs> Barnaby Phillips, you brought it on yourself. <laughs> I'm glad you can laugh about it, Barnaby. Some guys might be kind of sore. Oh, I am, but only at myself. Uh, you really want to meet Margie? You can, you know. Well, ah, sure, why not? I always wanted to ride in one of those easy-flying buses anyway. It must be like sleeping on a down pillow compared with an F-86. I could use a nice, relaxing milk run in your B-29. She's not a B-29. She's a WB-29. Converted for aerial weather reconnaissance. That's this squadron's job. Weather recon? Then you're the guys who are keeping me from that redhead in San Francisco. Well, no, no, not us, Barnaby. Margie's keeping you. 
Okay, fellas, if I can't see my redhead, I might as well try Margie. She doesn't sound like a very dangerous girl. For all our sakes, Barnaby, I hope she isn't. But from all reports, Margie's a pip. Aleutian Alice is ready for her mission. The fifth the squadron has flown into Typhoon Margie. In his greenhouse up front sits Captain Ralph Bennett, surrounded by the complex weather instruments with which he'll measure Typhoon Margie's size and direction. Behind him, in the pilot section, sits Captain Mike Miller, the aircraft commander, and his co-pilot, Second Lieutenant Carl Fellman. Lieutenant Barnaby Phillips is in the observer's seat. In the plane's aft section are the rest of the crew, radio operators, assistant engineer, drops and analyst. The team is poised, waiting to go into action. They listen as Mike calls Anderson Tower. Tower, this is Vulture Margie 5. Taxi and takeoff instructions, please. Roger, Vulture Margie 5. You're cleared to runway 7. Repeat, runway 7. Altimeter check, 29.90. Wind is east, southeast, at 10. Roger, Tower. Out. The plane begins to move as the 10,000 horses in her engines bite at the air. Out under the taxiway she moves, her fireball insignia of the 54th Strat Recon glaring down at the concrete strip. Mike pulls her at the end of the long runway. Vulture Margie 5 to tower. Okay to roll? You're cleared for takeoff, Vulture Margie 5. Have a good trip, sir. Thanks, Tower. Roger and out. A few hours have passed. Although the storm is still several hundred miles away, everyone on the ship has been busy. For in addition to scouting and reporting on Margie, Routine weather observations must be taken and reports sent back to the home base. The plane flies smoothly, not yet feeling the first winds from the edge of the typhoon that lies not so far ahead. Hey, this is sure a rocking chair ride. Sorry I didn't bring my knitting. Uh, you take her a while, Carl. I'm going to give our doubting Thomas here the 40-cent tour. Okay, Skipper. Now hold your present course at 700 millibar altitude. It's holding pretty steady at 10,000 feet, but uh, check with Ralph. I'll be back in time to start mixing it up with Margie. Come on, Phillips. Hey, this is a pretty big ship. I bet I crawled half a mile through that passageway. Uh, not quite. But Alice is a pretty big girl. I see you carry two radio operators. I need them. Have to send out a steady flow of weather data, and we've got to monitor a dozen voice and code frequencies. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, here's Staff Sergeant Harris, our drops and analyst. Sergeant Murray Harris, this is Lieutenant Barnaby Phillips. He flew jets in Korea. How are you? Hi, Lieutenant. Isn't it about time for a drop in, Sergeant? Yes, sir, it sure is. We have 49 without a miss. Got to try to make it 50 with this one. Oh, so that's what that gadget over there is, a drop in. You mind explaining it for me? No, not at all, sir. It's a, a miniature weather station and radio transmitter with a parachute attached. You drop it out of the plane, the chute opens, and while it's going down, it takes weather data and radios it back to us. Now, this one's ready to go. Uh, ready, sir? Sure. You want a hand, Sergeant? Well, if you detach the static line, sir, I'll open the airlock. And we're ready to go. Far away, Sarge. Drops and shoots open, sir. That's 50 with no misses. Remind me to buy you a cigar when we get back, Sergeant. Whew. What was that? Oh, we probably just dropped a few hundred feet in a hurry. Everything secure, Harris? Yes, sir. Weather observing a skipper. Over. Hand me that headset, Sergeant. Sure. Okay, W.O., this is Skipper. What's up? As if I didn't know. Just checked 700 millibar height. It's down 450 feet. Wind is up to about 60 miles per hour now. Tell our lieutenant he's about to meet his girl, Skipper. Roger, W.O. Let's scramble up front, Lieutenant. Watch your step. We'll be pitching and tossing a bit now. Barnaby, don't bother to straighten your tie or comb your hair. I don't think your date's going to care very much how you look. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, The New Shoe. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Young man, have you a flair for scientific subjects, physics, mathematics, electricity, astronomy? As an aircraft observer in the United States Air Force, you'd use your technical knowledge as a rated flying officer 
on an Air Force flying team in an interceptor, bomber, reconnaissance, or transport plane. You'd be trained to operate the latest in electronic and radar equipment. You'd be a member of a flying team trained in such skills as navigation, bombardment, radar interception, and others. You're eligible to apply if you're between 19 and 26 and a half, single, and have a high school diploma. If you pass written and physical entrance examinations, you'll start on a 14-month intensive training course. Then, graduation, aircraft observer wings, a commission as an Air Force lieutenant, earnings over $5,000, and an interesting assignment as flying officer in your United States Air Force. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of The New Shoe. According to the textbooks, a typhoon is a warm, rainy storm of oceanic origin, usually formed in the tropics south of the 20th parallel. To the men aboard Ocean Alice, the textbooks tell only part of the story. The typhoon is a treacherous enemy. At one moment, the big WB-29 is caught in vertical turbulence and is yanked up 1,000 feet, and then is suddenly jammed down. How you making out, Lieutenant? Pretty good. Can't say I think much of your taste in women. This one's too rough for me. We'll be in the eye soon. Eye? Center of the storm. We'll try for a Loran fix on it. Hope our wings stay on, eh, Carl? If they don't, we'll be sprouting some of our own. It's been nearly four hours since Vulture Marty 5 left the base at Guam, and nearly an hour since the plane entered the storm. Now, as Aleutian Alice nears the center of the typhoon, the ship is flying on instruments through lashing rain and gusts of wind that make her shudder as if she were about to fall apart. And then suddenly, a great change takes place. What happened? Are we still alive? We're in the eye of the storm, Lieutenant. No wind, no rain. Not here, but just look around you. Wow, is that what we've been going through? That was it. Look at those banks of clouds all around us. I feel like I'm in a football stadium, miles and miles high. Well, it's probably 25 to 35 miles across, too. Well, we're a pretty big football, but I feel like a flea in the middle of the Rose Bowl. Yeah, this is the eye, Lieutenant. The center of a typhoon is always like this, calm and clear, while the wind and rain tear around outside the center of the circle. Well, what happens now? Well, we fly around the eye while uh, Captain Bennett gets some pictures of it with that K-20 aerial camera of his. Then we get set to box the storm. Pretty big package to wrap up. <laughs> well, we don't exactly wrap it. We just fly around the outside of the storm to determine its size, wind velocities, and direction, and so on. Yeah. This is what the boys back at the ground radio station are waiting for. This baby is heading for Okinawa and Japan. Our personnel there need this information so they can set up safety precautions. You know, I'm beginning to feel pretty silly about a few of the things I said yesterday, Mike, about cream puff jobs and all that. I think nothing of it, Barnaby. To the outsider, what we do probably seems to be sort of useless. Uh, excuse me, Skipper. Yeah, what's up? Radar operator reports a break in the northwest sector. Shall we try for it? We finished our readings in the eye. Uh, shall we, gentlemen, run, not walk to the nearest exit? <laughs> As Aleutian Alice heads back into the storm, the combined efforts of both pilots are needed to keep her under control. Meanwhile, the navigator works at top speed to keep tabs on the rapidly changing wind data furnished by the weather observer every few minutes. Each of the crew's ten members has a job to do. Everyone is busy. Some gust nearly flipped us on our back. Right, Carl? Carl. Hey, Carl, you all right? I think he was hurt when we did that last flip-flop. I I'm all right, Skipper. My shoulder gave it a wrench. Let me have a look. Oh, you better watch your plane. I'll take a look at him. Okay, I'll hold the ship. Watch yourself. Slowly, bracing himself against the roll and pitch of the plane, Barty Phillips releases his safety belt and pulls his way across to where Carl Feldman is hanging onto the wheel, his face twisted in pain. It's no good. I can't do it. The pain's too much. Take it easy, boy. Let me get you out of here. Well, uh, Mike can't hold her alone. We've got to circle the whole storm. C can you take over for me? I sure can try. Ah, always know that you jet jockeys had what it takes. Good luck. With two men at the controls, one with experience, both with courage, Aleutian Alice fights her way through Typhoon Margie. 
And now, with Carl Fellman propped up comfortably in the observer's seat, and Mike Miller and Barnaby Phillips at the controls, she wings her way home. She's been through, inside, and around that snarling, screaming mass of wind and rain. She's got her data, her information, her photographs, the records of Typhoon Margie. She's radioed her information back to the base, and she's arrowing it now, not wasting a moment until her wheels touch an Anderson. That does it, Barney. A few hundred miles of smooth sailing, and we're through for the day. Woo, what a workout. You all right back there, Carl? Yeah, yeah, just fine, Skipper. Hey, you know, this Phillips is a regular typhoon goon. Hey, them spiking words, partner, I think. Ah, uh, he's throwing you a well-deserved compliment. Uh, Lieutenant, can you hold the ship a minute? I want to go back and see if everything's in one piece back there. Yeah, I can handle it. Roger. Be back in a few minutes. Hey, now what's good in the bike? He knows the boys back there can take care of themselves. Well, the old shoe must be softening up. Lucian Alice has been in the air for more than nine hours, and at last she's almost home. The navigator reports to Mike Miller. Then he reaches forward and cuts in his radio to call the base. Dower, this is Vulture Margie 5. Do you read? We read you, Vulture Margie 5. Request landing instructions, please. We have an injured man aboard. Request ambulance stand by. Roger, Vulture Margie 5. You're cleared to runway 26 for straight in approach. Attention all aircraft from vicinity of Anderson EFB. Emergency landing. Field is closed. Attention crew, stand by, prepare to land. Wheels down. Props 2100. Full rich mixture. Check. Flaps down 20 degrees. Give me full flaps on the approach. Check. Here we go. And then for a nice, quiet, relaxing movie. I went over to see Carl at the hospital. Nothing serious, just enough to keep him out of mischief for a week while his shoulder mends. Our friend here had quite an eventful date, wouldn't you say so, Mike? Yeah, Margie turned out to be quite a girl. <laughs> well, I don't regret for a minute having met her, though. You can't fall in love with them all. Yeah, where are you heading for, Barney? Like I said before, me for a nice, relaxing movie. Well, you don't really want to go to a movie, Barney, does he, Ralph? Well, I don't think a movie is the right sort of thing for a jet jockey. Nor for a weather chaser, either. Lieutenant Phillips, Tan Shun. What? You're kidding. You heard the captain, Lieutenant. He said Tan Shun. Well, if this is a gag, I don't get it. Lieutenant Phillips, Ford, hi. Up, two, three, four. Up, two. Captain Miller, just where are we going? Yours not to reason why, Lieutenant. Yours but to do or die. I'd rather not, if you don't mind. I'd rather not what? Die. I'm much too young. But seriously. Cut the chatter, fly boy. We're almost there. Well, there better be something more rewarding than Margie at the end of this walk. That's all I can say. Good evening, gentlemen. Um, may I have the honor of presenting to you Lieutenant Barnaby Phillips of the 51st Fighter Interceptor Group? Lieutenant Phillips, may I present to you the members of the Royal Order of Typhoon Goon. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, we are here to discuss the case of Lieutenant Barnaby Phillips. Now, he came amongst us through no fault of his own. He missed a date with a redhead in San Francisco. Oh, boy. Yeah, he, 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 he was a daughter and a scoffer. Only jet pilots on the front lines did anything worthy of note. Oh, for sure! But today, through a freak of conversation, he had a date with our darling Margie. Now, uh, what Captain Bennett and I would like to propose is that we elect Lieutenant Phillips to the Royal Order of Typhoon Goons as a new shoe. Ralph, what's a new shoe? Be quiet. Now, one of the big jobs of the 54th is typhoon penetrations. Now, they don't give us any gold stars for the job, so uh, we've worked up this order. Now, those of us who have flown into 10 typhoons with winds over 65 knots become royal command goons. 
with the rank of old shoe. Now, those of us with five become used shoes. Now, for those who have flown their first penetration and have done well, there's the title of neophyte goon and the rank of new shoe. Now, where's Captain Bennett? Right here. You have the uh, correct paraphernalia? I'm happy to report I do. Will you escort Lieutenant Barnaby Phillips forward, please? Well, go. Ah, that position will do, Captain. Lieutenant Phillips, it gives me great pleasure as a command goon to welcome you into our royal order. Not only for your successful participation in today's flight, but also because you have proven yourself this day personally worthy. It is our earnest hope that uh, although you came to us with a large chip on your shoulder, that we may count upon you as a friend. I hereby present you with this scroll of membership. And now, as a symbol of your rank, may I present you with this new shoe. Hey, speak! I don't know what kind of a speech I have a right to give here tonight since uh, I'm just a new shoe, but I would like to say a word or two. Sure, All right? Uh, up until today, uh, like most of us hotshot jet pilots, I guess I thought the only jobs worth doing were on a war front where bullets were the only dangers. But today I learned that the danger and brave men to fight it exist all over the world, in every branch of the Air Force, doing every kind of job. I feel lucky because today I learned that we're all part of a team. None of us can exist alone. The Air Force is a typical example of democracy in action. I'm honored by your honor. Well, that's all. How about that, boys? Yeah. <laughs> that was a good one, Barney, real good. Thanks, Mike. Well, come on, boy, don't be so solemn. <laughs> How about an old shoe buying a new shoe, a good hot cup of coffee? This is the beginning of the jet age, and you young men who can qualify can join the best jet school in the world, the United States Air Force. After a full year of training, you'll win the silver wings of a pilot, plus the prestige and pride of being one of the best in a great outfit. It's a job vital to your country's future and your own. If you qualify, you can be an aviation cadet. For full details, see your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting officer today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.